starting this pepper. I mean, they're ready, and I brought them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, there we go. Good ball. Happy Hunger Wednesday. Um, this is uh, this will be kind of a kind of a new and different uh, look for the Dean's List. I'm doing a different camera angle that I haven't used before, but um, figured I'd change it up today. Um, Starting out, I'm not drinking a homebrew. This is a Star Hill. It's a local uh, Charlottesville, Virginia uh, brewery. This is called Front Row. It's a gold nail. Uh, it's a beer. I guess it's been out. First time I had it was about a year ago, or maybe a little less than a year ago, but I really like it. So um, the reason I'm not having a homebrew right now is because I'm kind of having a shortage of homebrew. Uh, I uh, kicked the keg that had uh, hot brutality in it. Um, that competition happened this past weekend. Uh, the results, I mean, I guess the, the competition organizers know what the results are. Uh, we're supposed to find out sometime this week or early next week. So, fingers crossed. Again, if you win, yeah, I think they're awarding. There was, um, how many entries were there? I want to say there was 38, 38 or 40 entries. Uh, so, there's a lot of beers. Um, I actually went on Sunday to the... Um, to the Paradiso Pizza in Georgetown where they were doing the, the competition, but it was actually the competition had happened that morning, so the guys had already judged the beers, and what was going on in the afternoon was just the DC Homebrewers Club were sampling all of the entries. So it was kind of cool. I got to see someone trying my beer. Um, they had the, you know, little hot brutality label, and they were, they were pouring. So um, anyway, I got a note from the, uh, from the organizers, and, and we should find out you know, sometime this week or early next week. So, hmm. so that keg kicked. Uh, a lot of you guys got some of that in uh, beer mills. Uh, the other keg that I had didn't kick, but SJ took it up to Pennsylvania. And I don't know if you've seen his video. Uh, well, no, he sent a video in, in a chat, but he has actually turned that five gallons of Imperial uh, Irish Red Ale into an 80 proof uh, Dean's Rum. So, and he's putting it into a barrel for me. And uh, again, uh, SJ, I, I shit you not, that is like one of the nicest things somebody's ever done for me um, in this whole brewing, you know, uh, hobby that we have. I cannot wait um, to uh, get my hands on that thing. So thank you again. That's that's super super cool. You're a, you're an awesome guy. We just had we had a great visit uh, a little over a week ago when he when he came up and or when he came down. So I'm gonna have to plan a visit to go up there and. Uh, uh, drop off some beers that I wanted to take for NHC and and pick that uh, that barrel up whenever whenever it's ready so uh, hopefully that'll be some time in the next next month or so uh, what else so uh, Nordic school uh, Dippa so uh, you know the OG on that I think I talked about some other video it was 1075 and I'm gonna get back to that in a minute because that was a, a consternation I had about uh, specific gravity uh, measured by a hydrometer versus the refracting qualities on a refractometer. So SJ and I had a little philosophical discussion on that, and I'll kind of get to that in a minute. But uh, so yeah, that quite uh, dipa is the OG was 1075. Um, and that was thing was brewed on the on the 19th um, on this past Sunday. So that was uh, what was that? Uh, the 30, 29, 28, I don't know, was that the 28th or 29th, 28th or something like that, 27th, uh, whatever, yeah, I could have just add seven days, so the, the, the 26th, that, that should be Sunday, right, 28, 29, hell, I don't know, whatever it was, uh, I, uh, yeah, Saturday was the 19th, so I checked it on, you know, day eight, and the gravity was down to, um, 10, 12, so it's 8.4% beer. Um, it's, it's, it's done. It's, it's not going to ferment anymore. So uh, I immediately put in 
uh, man, seven ounces of dry hops of, of uh, Simcoe and Citra. So that's cool. Um, I've never done that large of a dry hop before. So we'll, we'll see what that does. Um, yeah, I, I, I tasted the sample. It, the, the quike yeast, the it's a Voss quike, really um, was interesting. It, it, um, you, you don't really get a good feel when the beer's warm and it was really warm because you know I had it fermenting at like 80 plus degrees. Um, so you, you don't get a really good good feel for what the quality of the of the beer flavor is going to be uh, when it's warm, but you know it, it tasted pretty darn good. Still had a lot of sweetness, but I think that kind of drops out once you once you carbonate it. So those seven ounces, and I put them in these these new like it's like a hop tube. Uh, if you saw Josh Secor's uh, reverse hop thing that he did for his keg that goes into the dip tube, um, it's kind of like that. It's a long cylindrical tube. Uh, maybe about a inch and a half in diameter and uh, and it's got little plastic screws on each end and you can put in about two what is it about two and a half ounces of hops um, in each one of these tubes so I did three of them so uh, is that right two and a half ounces well two two and a quarter ounces something like that but I've got uh, seven ounces I did uh, three uh, four ounces of citra and three ounces of Simcoe those are in those tubes I put them all in I'm not going to mess around with staging it. I'm just going to do a straight up, probably going to try to keg it on Saturday because uh, the next week I'll be in Colorado. So this weekend, I'm on Sunday, I'm flying to Colorado um, and I'll be there for most of next week. So uh, I'll let that thing, uh, you know, uh, carb while I'm gone uh, and then I'll come back and should have a nice tasty quite dipper uh, on tap. So... Okay, so to the philosophical discussion on uh, hydrometer versus refractometer. So everyone knows the hydrometer just measures specific gravity. So um, the OG, you have a lot of sugar dissolved in your, in your fluid. Uh, you put in the yeast, it eats the sugar, it produces alcohol, which is probably a little lighter than water, and so it reduces the specific gravity, right? The water becomes less viscous or less dense. The specific gravity changes. Uh, and the difference is, you know, you, you, you measure your alcohol content. So when you measure it with a hydrometer, you kind of get a pure reading. When you measure it with a re refractometer, you get a good reading before fermentation, but then after fermentation, the quality of the, of the light refracting through the fluid is different because the constants have changed, right? So you've introduced alcohol, which is lighter than water, into the mix, and it changes, I guess, how light refracts. So there is, you know, tools, I think probably Beersmith has one. There's some online where as long as you know the starting gravity and maybe some other 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 uh, numbers, uh, you can have a correction formula. So you can take, you know, fermented beer once it's finished fermentation. You can drop it on the hydrometer, get a reading, and then apply this calculus to it. Uh, and you're supposed to get an adjusted uh, final gravity. Um, I don't, I don't normally do that because I, it's too much of a pain in the ass for me. So, uh, I use a hydrometer. The problem with my hydrometer lately, and I don't know why this is, uh, but used to, I used to get them from the homebrew store and I would drop it in and it would measure 1.000, which is what water is supposed to be. Um, on my refractometer, it measures 1.000. I clean off the refractometer, put a drop of water in there. It's right at, you know, the blue, the little blue shadow line is right at 1.000. For now, for some reason, when I'm putting my hydrometers in there, and these are, I, I, you know, you break hydrometers from now, you know, so I bought a new hydrometer, and there's two different kinds. You get at least the ones where I, where I shop. You get the one that has the solid white paper with the graduated uh, measurements on it, and then there's one that has color bands. And I like the one with the color bands because it, you know, you have like green and orange and whatever, and the difference of the color helps you determine, oh, that's 20, that's 30. You know, it's just easier to see for me with, you know, old eyes. Um, well, the last couple of colored ones, and they don't, I, I can't find the other ones anymore. Um, when I put them in with water, uh, I'm not reading 1.000. I'm reading less than 1.000. So I'm reading like 0 0.007, 0 0.006. So I'm three or four points off of what the water should be. So, um, 
when I I use I use the refractometer for my original gravity. Put a drop on there, and I'm reading like in this case it was 1075 for uh, the Nordic Old School. Um, I went ahead and put some in a hydrometer because SJ was here, and he's like, I always do mine with a hydrometer because I trust it. So I put I put some fluid in the hydrometer from the work, and I measured it, and I got 1075 on the hydrometer. Uh, we got uh, 1070 on the, uh, or I got 1075 on the refractometer. We got 1070 or 1071 on the um, on the hydrometer. So I told SJ, I said, you know, I really haven't been. I only use a hydrometer because of this difference now. For some reason, it's measuring less than zero. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I showed him, and he goes, oh, wow, okay. Um, so, so I, you know, so, so the, the final gravity that I measured was actually 1.009. Um, I added three or four points to it, ended up with 1012. So starting gravity was 1075, finishing gravity, adjusting for the, you know, hydrometer sitting lower in the water, ended up being uh, 10, 12. So I'm thinking it's, I think, I'm thinking it's 8.4% beer, which that's about typical for what old school normally is. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my philosophy on the, on the refractometer and the hydrometer, interested in, in the notes, uh, what you guys think. Um, and, and is anybody else seeing this with a recent batch of hydrometers? I mean, I've bought three or four in the last couple of months and they're all doing the same thing. Maybe it's something with my water, I don't know, but uh, anyway. Uh, so that's that. Um, so wow, and I'm already at 11 minutes. So uh, I don't think there's a whole lot else to talk about other than I need to figure out what my next beer is going to be. I think uh, I kind of, after a few beers the other night, uh, this past weekend, signed myself up to do a quick turn brew for uh, one of my neighbor's uh, memorial. I, t I talked her into throwing a Memorial Day party, uh, so she's going to do it. And uh, so I told her I would bring my jockey box with some beer, so... I don't have any beer, so I'm gonna have to, I have to think, think up something or drop out. I don't know, but uh, I've got the ingredients for a, a Munich, excuse me, a, a Munich Hellas. So I'm excited to do that. I love doing Munich Hellas, but I need to empty out some of the refrigerator. I got a lot of beer bottles in there, uh, which means I need to do some more beer mills. I, I've got a bunch of quad. I've got so much quad. I got quad coming out of the yin yang. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, I got quad coming out of my ears. So uh, I mean, quad's not something you just kick back and. You know, it's not a lawnmower beer. So, anyway, that's all I have for the Dean's List. Um, yeah, crossing my fingers, seeing uh, what happens with the Paradiso Challenge. Um, and yeah, hey, that's all I got. Have yourself a happy homebrew, and have a very, very happy homebrew Wednesday. Cheers.